morning in some cases. I want to welcome you to today's webinar on the NY Sun Incentive Program 2015, How to Get Started. On behalf of our sponsors, NISAC and Solar City, I want to thank everyone for joining us. I'm Clint Wilder, Senior Editor at Clean Edge, and I'll be moderating today's conversation. Just some quick housekeeping notes. Uh, all participants are in listen-only mode, but we want to capture as many questions from the audience as possible. Uh, to do that, we welcome all of you to type in questions in the chat box uh, provided on your GoToWebinar screen, and we'll address as many of these as possible during the session. And just to note, this webinar is being recorded and will be archived uh, to be accessed later on. <clears throat> uh, so the next slide, please. So we're uh, very excited to have uh, three excellent speakers with us today, uh, all of whom had many years of experience in clean energy policy in New York State and with the NY Sun program in particular. Al Gordon is CEO of National Strategies and was an aide to former Governor Mario Cuomo. He's worked in New York State policy for more than 10 years, including two years consulting on large-scale solar projects. Uh, Jennifer Jacob is Senior Project Development Manager at Solar City, with eight years of experience in solar project management. And Stephen Aquario is Executive Director of NISAC, a position he has held since 2004. Uh, so next slide, just take a quick look at the agenda before we get started. So uh, Al and Jen will take us through an overview of the program and uh, details on the 2015 uh, block grant process. Uh, Jen will dive in a little deeper on how to get started. And, um, and then Steve will uh, talk about uh, various case studies of NISAC members uh, who have gone solar, including a, a fairly detailed look at Onondaga County. And then we'll have 15 or 20 minutes uh, for questions at the end. So please feel free to type those in at any time. Um, now I'll Turn it over to uh, Al Gordon to take us through what is NY Sun. Thank you, uh, Clint, and uh, welcome, everyone, and thanks for joining. Very much appreciate your interest in the New York Sun program. So a little background on the New York Sun program. It was uh, proposed by Governor Cuomo and passed by the state legislature in a bipartisan uh, vote in 2012. Um, it, uh, the goal of the program is to make solar affordable for commercial entities in New York State, across the state. Um, and the state is making an investment of a little over a billion dollars over a 10-year period. So very significant investment. The program is overseen by NYSERDA, which is the New York State Energy Research and Development uh, Authority. Um, and the program basically works by providing incentives to support the development of solar projects. So it's the private developer of the solar project that, uh, who are eligible for the state incentives. And so this provides for a very true public-private partnership uh, through these state incentives. Um, it's applicable to all commercial power users in most of the utilities uh, across the state, including local governments. And local government's been a big focus uh, for the New York Sun uh, program. Next slide, please. So how does the program work? The program works. Uh, incentives, as I said, are provided uh, and made available to solar developers. These developers, like Solar City, package the incentive along with tax exemptions, which exist at a federal uh, level. Basically, because the developers receive the incentives and the tax exemptions, the developer of the solar project builds and maintains the ownership of the system. So it's the developers who have the system and own it. Um, and what the developer does is uses the tax incentives to lower the cost of the in installation and then pass on the energy that's produced from the system at a lower cost for uh, customers. And so this provides lower cost energy for commercial entities across the state. This, so how does it provide the significant savings? 
for entities in New York State? Well, first of all, you don't need to spend capital on a solar project. Uh, second, you will enter what's called a power purchase agreement, a PPA with a developer. And in the PPA, any entity will agree to purchase power at a locked in discounted rate for 20 years. Um, and what's even uh, great about it, even better, is that the rates are typically set lower than the current utility rate. So in other words, you have no capital, you have savings over time, and you have immediate savings from your current costs. And this all provides a long-term energy hedge against rising utility rates, because you're getting that locked in rate, you'll know what your rate is for the next 20 years. So the, the way you apply, um, and NYSERDA, as I said before, runs the program, but there is an application process. And NYSERDA just recently opened what's called the megawatt block incentive package and structure. Um, so this is a block program, which is available on an as-you-come basis, first come, first served, with 120 megawatts in the first block, which is now open. It's available for anybody to apply. Now, there are different rates. In New York State, uh, there are uh, state law now allows remote net metering, which means that you can put solar away from an actual site that's being used. And, and Jen's going to talk about that a little bit uh, in, in a few minutes. So there are different rates for monetary and volumetric crediting. And we'll go into that in detail in, in, in a couple of minutes. But the program is currently open. Um, and all you need to apply, it's, it's a fairly simple process, is a signed contract with your solar developer and then an interconnection application and utility response. The internet connection application is with your utility. Now, to make it even easier, uh, NISAC, which is one of the sponsors here uh, of this webinar, um, and through uh, an organization that they helped set up uh, years ago called MEGA, the Municipal Electric, gas, uh, Electric and a Gas Association, uh, saw that solar was such an important need in, in New York State in terms of reduced energy costs. So back in 2012, MEGA held an open procurement for, local, for a local government group procurement. In other words, they put out an RFP to all the solar developers and went through a process, a rigorous process, of selecting the most competitive and competent solar provider, which happened to be Solar City. And because they did that, and they had the foresight to do that in ISAC, um, there is a, uh, a group, local government group procurement already done so that all local municipalities around the state can actually purchase projects and contract for projects through that uh, contract vehicle rather than going through an RFP process, which is particularly important considering that the megawatt block incentive program by NYSERDA is a first come, first serve uh, uh, project. Next slide, please. Let me turn it over to Jen now from uh, Solar City, who's going to talk a little bit about the remote net metering versus behind the meter. Okay, there's two different types of projects you can do with solar in New York. As Al mentioned, there's remote net metering. And remote net metering is where you essentially take a project, put it out in a parcel of land. That parcel of land can be anywhere within the same utility and the same load zone. Um, it doesn't need to be adjacent to your facilities, so it can be anywhere off-site. With this type of project, what happens is that you are virtually or remotely setting off your power, not literally. What happens is the kilowatt that is produced generates a credit value that you apply to your utility bill. And you have to designate specific offset meters, basically to justify the system size that you're setting up. And when you get the bills for those meters, you will see a credit on your bill for the uh, power that is produced by the solar project. And with a remote net metered system, you will see a higher cost per kilowatt hour rate in your PPA. Somehow, this is due to there being somehow. higher interconnection costs. And it also receives a lower NYSERDA incentive. And two incentive levels, one for remote net metered, one for behind the meter, which I'll get into in a moment. 
However, even with the higher cost per kilowatt hour, greater savings possible with a remote net meter system. With what you can do is offset smaller, more expensive meters with this type of project. So really get creative when you look at your load, what type of meters you want to incorporate on the project. Use those expensive ones and offset them, which can result in greater savings. So year one indicative savings on a two megawatt system is in the $20,000 range. But I do want to know that this is can vary significantly based on your load profile. So if you're interested in the project, I would encourage us to take a look at your bill or any solar vendor to take a look at your bill. We can get into the next steps a little bit further on in the presentation. So the next option is the behind the meter system. And this is the much more traditional structure for solar. This is where you'll see solar on a rooftop or in a field or a carport adjacent to the facility itself. The array is hosted on site. The kilowatt hours produced offset the kilowatt hours used at the site. They do not go out onto the grid first. They go to your facility first. Any excess may go out onto the grid. If you have a lower cost per kilowatt hour PPA rate, it's because the interconnection costs are lower, and this type of project receives a higher NYSERDA incentive, but the year one savings are lower because you are essentially getting a one-to-one -one offset with the power used at the site. So it's really just a case of getting that PPA rate down lower to what you're currently using. And so year one savings on two megawatt system is a little under $10,000. Next slide. So uh, this is Al Gordon again, and I'm going to finish up with this slide. Um, so I mentioned before uh, that <laughs> NISAC had the foresight uh, to put out the procurement um, and create a statewide vehicle for municipalities to uh, use when they're contracting for uh, a solar project. As a result of that, there has been tremendous interest in the New York Sun program among municipalities in the state. You can see from this map that there are 32 counties, uh, 32, uh, that have either been awarded or pending or an RFP is already out. And in addition to that, there have been many cities and towns such as Schenectady and Glens Falls and Ithaca and others that have participated. So the, the good news is that this project is a proven one with great results and participation rates uh, to date and now a new incentive block program open for people to participate in a very quick way as soon as they get their contracts and their documents done with their utility. So uh, very easy to get involved and, and ready for uh, applications. Excellent. Thanks, Al. Um, and now we'll uh, turn it back to Jen uh, for uh, more details on how to qualify and get started with the program. And the next slide, please. Okay, so who can be involved in this project? Um, it needs to be investor-owned utility customers, including National Grid, NYSEG, and Central Hudson. Uh, NYFA and LIFA are also newly eligible. They have not been able to participate in previous incentives. No municipal utilities um, can participate. And so what we're going to be looking for in a project is approximately uh, 550,000 kilowatt hours of an annual aggregate load. Obviously, we want to reach an economy of scale uh, when we're setting these projects up. The, the savings are um, relatively slim, and so we want to have the most cost-effective project out there. So with that in mind, the ground mount is the preferred structure. Um, you get the most productive production out of it. It's the least expensive to install, and there's no impact on your facility. So men, to put this into perspective, a one megawatt project takes up approximately five acres. We can install up to two megawatts at a time, uh, which would take up approximately 10 acres. We want it to be, if it's a behind the meter system, we would want it to be adjacent to your facility. If it's a remote net meter system, it needs to be adjacent to three phase local distribution lines. Clear land with southern exposure is obviously ideal. Roof mount is also an option provided it is either a new facility and or a new roof. We would not want to be installing an array on a roof that was due for uh, replacement within 10 years. 
And ideally, we would have an, an open area of approximately 70,000 square feet. Uh, next slide. So provided you have all of this in, as well as an interest in going solar, uh, how would we get started? So the first thing would be a solar consultation and a project estimate. We would want to look at your bill, um, at your total kilowatt hour usage, um, and also your available facilities and land. If you're doing a behind the meter system, we're going to want to look at the facilities. We would want as built as possible for the buildings themselves if it's going to be a roof mounted system. If it's a remote net metered system, we're going to want to look at the property you're proposing, where it is in regards to the distribution lines, what kind of property is it, is it a flood zone, is it shaded, do we need to do ground clearance. Obviously, the less work required possible, the more advantageous PPA rate and ultimately the better savings you're going to get. And then we'll take a look at all of your energy bills. We'll want to get our hands on as many as possible to be able to pick and choose the ones that we look most advantageous to offset. And then with all of this information, we we'll put together a savings assessment for you with a cost per kilowatt hour and a 20-year return on investment analysis to show you exactly what your savings will be in year one and throughout the duration of the term. So the next, uh, so say you decide to move forward at that point, we will take a look at your procurement process. I understand that this is unique to every entity in New York State. If you are a mega member, a mega member, you can utilize their procurement. Even if you're not, you can utilize their procurement. If you choose to do your own procurement, at this point, you could issue an RFP or an RFI. Um, we would want a single point of contact for this. And then we would want to understand all of the related reviews and approvals. Do you have board meetings that we need to present at? Who needs to take a look at a contract? Who needs to approve the pricing? Um, all of that information. Finally, when you're ready to move forward, you have the NYSERDA megawatt block program application process. And so as Al mentioned earlier, we would need an executed PPA contract to apply. We also need utility interconnection approval. Now one thing to note is that we initially submit a utility interconnection approval. Solar City or your solar vendor can do this on your behalf. The utility has up to three weeks to respond to that, to that initial solicitation. And they usually will take all three of those weeks. Our recommendation is use those three weeks, get your, interconnect, your utility interconnection um, approval submitted, and use those three weeks to negotiate your contract so that when you have the response from the utility, because the response is required to submit the NYSERDA, you could take the utility solicitation, their subsequent response, and the signed contract and submit them all together. Solar City will handle all of the paperwork. And there's also a deposit that require, required on the incentive that Solar City will handle as well. Next slide, please. And so just a little bit of an overview on Solar City. We have five operation centers in New York State. Uh, everyone, Albany, um, Orange County, Westchester, Long Island, and Amsterdam. We have over 600 employees. And we've constructed more than 5,000 commercial and residential projects within New York State throughout all locations of the state, totaling more than 45 megawatts. And these customers include commercial, residential, as well as municipal. Uh, next slide. In addition, we are also in the process of constructing a panel manufacturing facility. Uh, we've already broken ground on it. It's located in Buffalo, New York. It is due to be completed in 2016 and operating at full capacity by 2017. It will create 5,000 jobs in New York State, 3,000 of which will be in Buffalo. Next slide. Okay, at this point, I'm going to hand it over to Steve Aquario, the Executive Director of NYSEC. Thank you, Jennifer. And uh, I'd like to thank Clint Wilder, our uh, moderator for today's session from Clean Edge. Uh, and also Al Gordon uh, for his important comments uh, describing the state of New York and to Jennifer as well for talking about the various ways that New York's local governments and school districts also are implementing solar. I think at this time it also deserves uh, a thank you and a, a shout out to the New York Governor uh, Andrew Cuomo 
uh, for his particular interest in solar, uh, his foresight to invest in solar manufacturing in Buffalo, New York, uh, with Solar City, and for his initiative, the New York Sun, uh, which made uh, much of what we have been talking about possible uh, on this webinar and across the state. Uh, solar energy is not new. Uh, it has been around for decades, uh, but it is relatively new to New York, a northeastern state uh, with a high concentration of sunshine throughout the year. Uh, but uh, the interest in solar energy has uh, wavered over the years. I can recall about five years ago entertaining solar, uh, but quickly dismissing it as too much time and too little return. So with the initiative of New York Sun and the leadership of uh, the state of New York providing opportunities and incentives uh, for companies and in particular Solar City to invest in New York State, uh, the dividends and the returns on this investment are indeed promising and growing rapidly. In particular, uh, we've talked a bit about, Jennifer talked a bit, and I believe Al, about remote net metering. Uh, remote net metering uh, is a relatively new statute in New York, uh, which has created significant new opportunities for the State Association of Counties to help its membership uh, and also towns, cities, and villages, and school districts pursue renewable projects to save on their energy costs. Uh, without remote net metering, it would have proven difficult but not impossible to construct these types of projects and working with Solar City to produce savings, but the remote nature and the net remote net metering really provided a jump start for New York's local governments. So to recap a bit, uh, the Association of Counties worked in partnership, as has been discussed a bit here, with the Municipal Electric and Gas Alliance. Uh, we had typically focused on electric and gas uh, purchasing, uh, but decided to do a procurement uh, through Tompkins County, uh, and ultimately uh, working together with MEGA, we rolled out a new renewable uh, energy program designed to connect local governments with options for solar projects. And following a competitive bid process, as Al Gordon had mentioned, a bid let by Tompkins County, Solar City was in fact selected as the solar provider. And NISAC, in conjunction with MEGA, began to host this, this competitively bid uh, project or bid across the state and actively educating members about the opportunities of solar and the unique nature of the state's net metering program. As Al Gordon mentioned, there are over 30 New York counties which are now pursuing projects with Solar City and find that going green and saving money indeed go hand in hand. And the return on the investment that I spoke about is in fact uh, more uh, prevalent uh, with us today than it was five years ago. Counties also enjoy the benefit of making their energy local and having a more resilient and reliable energy source. One of the important features for any level of government, whether it's the federal, state, or in our case, the local governments and school districts, is budget predictability, uh, price stability. And solar offers that. Solar energy offers long-term competitive energy prices. And that's important for local governments in New York, all of whom are charged with saving taxpayer dollars wherever possible. Let me give you one example in Onondaga County, New York, which sits in central New York, uh, as a way to illustrate how counties are finding solar a great fit for their energy needs. In this particular case, the county of Onondaga turned to the sun as an alternative source for cleaner and cheaper electricity. This was a mandate by the county executive, Joanne Mahoney, who has invested her time, resources, and energy to turn Onondaga, which is typically a, quote, orange county, into a, quote, green county. 
In 2014, county officials in Onondaga signed a 20-year power purchase agreement with Solar City. And this agreement was to supply energy at a fixed rate that's lower than what their utility company had currently charged. After winning a bid, a subsequent bid from Governor Cuomo's New York Sun Initiative, their system was built at an even reduced cost, which generated even more savings for the county. Just some brief details in the interest of time, I'll keep this brief. The project included two systems, and Jennifer mentioned these types of systems excuse, around the excuse state. Excuse me, Steve, can we uh, move to the next slide, please, which shows Onondaga County uh, details. Thank you. There you go. Thanks. So here we are. Here we're looking at uh, the project included two systems. One is a ground-mounted uh, on vacant land that was owned by the Oak Orchard Waste Treatment Plant. The other, a roof-mounted system on top of two recently built concrete water tanks. Again, very visionary by the county using a dual system, a ground mount and a roof mounted system. And together, uh, what used to be unused space has now been repurposed to generate solar energy. Together, the systems are expected to offset more than 132 million pounds of carbon emissions. That's the equivalent of removing 11,465 cars from the road. The systems will also save more than 159 million gallons of water that would have otherwise be used to consume to produce electricity from fossil fuel or nuclear resources. Because the county had so much success with their first solar project, they've been pursued, they're pursuing further projects at this time and are now exceeding four megawatts of energy from solar. All of this happened because of the vision of the chief elected official, Joanne Mahoney, the Onondaga County Legislature supporting these initiatives, who was committed to having her government, the taxpayers of this county, to a long-term renewable energy strategy and a renewable energy portfolio. So while it can be confusing to certain public officials to wind your way through this process, if you have the vision from the top and the support of the elected body and the elected officials of these local governments and school districts, the process can move much quicker and in, in return more uh, positive results for their local governments. So Clint, uh, that will conclude my remarks. Again, I'd like to thank you for hosting this session here and including me in this important program. Well, thank you, Steve. And uh, one, one question, um, can you give us some idea of the types of cost savings that uh, the, they're seeing either in on, Onondaga or, or in the other counties? The, uh, the initial cost savings, I, I don't know, uh, Jennifer or Al, if you have those figures in front of me here, uh, I don't know if it was 30% uh, that we had seen off of the of the, the traditional utility bill, um, but it, it is uh, uh, substantial over the length of the agreement. I don't have the exact figures in front of me, but we've seen them uh, into the millions of dollars uh, over the life of the contract. Uh, the fact that the New York Sun uh, grant uh, reduced the cost of constructing the facility as well, saved money in the, in the upfront cost of putting in these systems, and again, at the conclusion of the uh, lease uh, of the equipment, I believe the county leased these um, uh, hardware. Uh, they have the option to either purchase that or or, uh, or return it back to uh, to the company. But uh, substantial savings. Uh, I think it was in the neighborhood of 30% or so. <clears throat> Great. Um, I'd like to remind everyone, uh, if you have questions, please uh, type them in the chat box on your GoToWebinar uh, control panel there, and uh, we'll be happy to uh, ask them of our panelists. Um, <clears throat> I guess uh, digging into the, the cost savings a little more, and uh, maybe this is for, for Al or, or Jen, um, 
can you talk about you talked about getting uh, kilowatt hour rates that are lower? Can we get a little more specific on uh, on what what types of rates you you're, you've been seeing in the in the PPAs? Yeah, I can take that question. Um, it, as I mentioned earlier, it, it really depends on the type of system that you install. A lower cost system with higher production is more advantageous. In addition, there are certain areas within the state that are designated strategic zones. For example, Clinton County, the entirety of the county within Ninth Egg Territory is considered strategic. So in Clinton County, they get a 25% adder onto their nice data incentive. Um, there's areas throughout the state that are considered strategic, including some downstate and central Hudson um, and some in the northern part of national grid territory. And so if you factor that in, um, you can see PPA rates anywhere from six and a half cents, uh, I would say up to 10 cents and over if you want to do something that's more expensive, like a landfill project. Um, so within, for instance, with a landfill, um, I mean, that, in that you're utilizing land that you otherwise would not be able to build anything on. And on the flip side, it's a more expensive racking system because you can't penetrate the ground and you also can't design it to get the optimal tilt that you need for ideal production in an area as far north as New York State. So for landfills, you're going to be seeing something in the 10 cent range. So anywhere from six and a half to 10, um, depending on whether you're strategic and whether you can get a very highly producing ground mounted system. Okay, um, and uh, another one for you, Jen. Uh, you talked about the uh, utility inter interconnection process and that they usually take the full three weeks, but just in general, uh, are utilities in New York State been pretty cooperative, easy to work with? Um, on this, you know, or because uh, you know we cover we cover these issues around the country at Clean Edge, and uh, it's not always the case uh, elsewhere. Yeah, you know, it, it's a good question, and um, solar is relatively new in New York State, as Steve was saying um, during his part of the presentation. It is relatively new, and it's new to us. It's new to the utilities as well, and these remote net meter systems are not small undertakings. If you think about a two megawatt system, that's going to be producing approximately three million kilowatt hours annually. And to be back feeding that onto the grid is a big undertaking for the utility. So there's an initial utility impact study for remote net meter systems that takes three months to turn around. And then as the process from that point forward, um, let's just say it's getting better. <laughs> As we begin, as we get begin to work better with these utilities, um, we are starting to develop a process and streamline it. I mean, you saw from the the charts that we have. I mean, there's incredible adoption in New York State, and so um, I think it's just a matter of us continuing to work close together and hammer out this process um, until we have something that, that's solid. But uh, it's good; it's getting better. Mm -hmm. And, you know, kind of looking at the big picture in the whole utility reform uh, program, the, the REV program in the state, uh, which, you know, encourages more distributed assets for the utilities, I'm sure that uh, will, will play a bigger part in the future, would you agree? Yes. Yes, I would. Yeah. Um, and uh, Al or, or Jen, do you have... Uh, more specific cost savings uh, available for uh, Onondaga County? Well, it's important uh, to note with Onondaga County that there is there was recently a change with remote net metering and the way those types of projects were credited in New York State. And that change happened on, on June 1st. Those types of projects um, were no longer available. So with Onondaga County, um, I, a project of that size previously would have saved, would have seen savings um, in the $100,000 range for a two megawatt system. Um, but then Oneida County, when you compare them, they're a system that has been installed 
they, and as I noted earlier, with a behind the meter system, which Oneida County did do, they tied it directly into their municipal facility. Their savings are lower, and theirs are in the $12,000 range. So there's, there's a wide range available, um, and the remote net metering policy that changed, there's still specific projects that could potentially be eligible for that. So if you're interested, I would definitely encourage you to inquire. And if you're not um, eligible for that, as I mentioned before, you, it, it's just a matter of getting our hands on your bill and finding the most advantageous meters to offset um, to try to create the, great, the greatest amount of savings on a project. Mm -hmm. And I think, Clint, I think one of the things is from a broad perspective, uh, when Jen was talking earlier about the process starts typically with uh, an entity providing copies of bills and then Solar City can do an assessment um, and show what the savings could be. I think looking at the state broadly, when you consider what the savings typically have been uh, from that first assessment, it's been anywhere from about 15 to 40 percent um, savings. Uh, so somewhere in that range, depending again, as Jen said, on the specifics relating to the projects. Okay. Um, what uh, I think this is for for Steve or well, whoever would like it. Um, what what are the current incentives uh, available from NYSERDA? Um, I can take that. So the, for the types of projects we're talking about today, um, there's two incentives available. It's the megawatt block structure, um, and there's one set of incentives. There's a little bit higher rate that's for remote net metered, or sorry, a little bit, yeah, higher rate for remote net metered system, a little bit lower rate for behind the meter system, and they step down in blocks of approximately 120 megawatts per block. There is a separate set of incentives for Con Ed territory. There is also a separate incentive program. It is called PON, which stands for Program Opportunity Notice 2112. That is for project size 200 kilowatts and lower. That is also a step-down incentive, um, and that incentive has been in place for over a year now. And if you have a, a project you're considering, say you're a school district, and you want to do a lot of small arrays as opposed to one large array, then the PON 2112 incentive would be a better fit for your project. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> Steve, um, can you talk a little bit in more detail about the, the process for uh, counties to join the program? Well, thank you, Clint. Um, with with uh, projects such as 20-year um, power purchase agreements, um, sort of new uh, to government, um, perhaps not so much new to uh, private sector, but for government, uh, local government, county governments, uh, not something we have typically done uh, in the past. Uh, Onondaga coming through, Oneida County, two early leaders, early innovators, if you will, in New York State, paving the way with a demonstrated commitment by the executive leadership of those counties to invest in renewable energy. Uh, others, um, obviously, following through here, as Al Gordon mentioned, over 30 New York counties looking at this. Um, competition is always good uh, in the interest of procurement, uh, hearing what the uh, competition or competitors uh, will submit uh, bids to various municipalities and school districts. Uh, it's going to come down to uh, a proven reputation and an ability to, in fact, uh, generate savings that have been promised. Uh, for counties, in fact, all local governments, community colleges, even state agencies, uh, they're certainly welcome uh, to use the bid uh, that was put out by Tompkins County. Uh, Tompkins County let this bid out for, this, for its own purposes, but also uh, as a what's called a piggyback bid, uh, meaning that other municipalities uh, could piggyback or take advantage of this publicly bid um, contract here, uh, which also had uh, the terms of the power purchase agreement negotiated uh, 
as part of the procurement. So not only was the, uh, the company Solar City being the vendor that was selected, but also the terms of the power purchase agreement itself vetted uh, and language uh, enacted as part of that procurement. So that procurement is available, uh, that bid is available, it can be shipped to any municipality that would like to look at the terms itself, making sure that it complies with its terms and conditions of local procurement. Uh, but it's been a very active uh, procurement all over the state of New York. And uh, we're, again, we're very grateful for Tompkins County and MEGA uh, for doing that bid. Okay. Um, I'm, so as, as you all know, uh, NYSERDA recently announced a 10-year $1.5 billion uh, investment plan in, in renewable energy. Um, so kind of looking forward, uh, how do you see that affecting this program? And this is, and anyone can jump in on that. I mean, this is Al. I, I see that as just uh, in conjunction with this program. The state, um, as Steve indicated before, led by the governor, has a huge commitment to renewable uh, energy. Um, New York Sun is one component of a broad program. Uh, but, uh, you know, it, you could see it in the incentives and the dollars that are being put aside that the state is really trying to encourage participation in these programs so that entities across the state can lower their energy costs and also go green. So I think it all goes hand in hand in one very significant strategy of, of uh, promoting uh, renewable energy. I think it also <laughs> goes hand in hand with early on, uh, Jen mentioned uh, Solar City uh, creating and building a plant uh, in Buffalo, New York. Uh, you know, traditionally, uh, most of the solar manufacturing activity in the world occurred outside of the United States. So this is a huge move by the company and the state. Uh, the governor uh, really recruited uh, Solar City very aggressively, and Solar City saw Buffalo as a great place with a workforce and a good, uh, a, a great place to manufacture solar, solar panels. So from a perspective of now, the company will be manufacturing panels in Buffalo that will be used on projects across the state. That goes hand in hand with the incentives that are given out. So you can see a full circle here of economic activity, both in terms of promoting savings for entities, but also creating jobs uh, and, and good economy. Oh, excellent. Um, okay, uh, we have a question. Um, does a does a PPA need to be signed with the customer uh, prior to applying for a, a NYSERDA incentive? Um, and it, if the solar company does not have this in place, do they have to submit a deposit with the application? And if so, how much? Well, I, uh, I can take this, but like to that, be clear, yeah. I, I'm taking this on behalf of Solar City and not necessarily uh, other vendors and what their process may be. Um, it, although I do believe it is required by NYSERDA that everyone do have both a signed contract and a deposit. Um, they have a they NYSERDA wants to ensure that the projects are real projects, not that people are simply reserving incentives for projects that are still in development phase. And so. Um, it's a signed contract as well as a deposit. Solar City will not put down the deposit, which is substantial, um, over $100,000 on a two megawatt system without having a contract in place. And then in addition, you do also need the interconnection, the communication and subsequent response with the utility as part of your application. Okay. And also, uh, Clint, Clint yeah, if I could add one thing, uh, not as a uh, solar city person, but somebody who's spoken to a lot of local governments across New York State, um, there's two things uh, that are very important through the process. Number one, you have to select a developer who can execute on projects, has the experience to do so, and will provide you with um, – the, the details of your projects in a transparent way in advance. I, I have found Solar City to be absolutely the leader in that um, in the solar field um, because 
uh, you need to have a partner in developing these projects because it's the developer that's going to be drawing down the incentives on your behalf. Um, so, uh, so the whole notion to me is make sure that you select a partner that is going to be your partner on a long-term basis that is transparent with you, uh, that gives you the information and feedback that can assess what your savings are all in advance. And then once uh, you have that proposal um, and you can move to a contract, it's all locked in, but you need that partnership. It's a real public-private partnership uh, moving forward. Okay. Uh, thanks, Al. Al, um, if you can uh, come off your speakerphone, it's starting to uh, echo just a little bit. Thanks. Um, okay. So uh, this is for, for Jen or possibly Steve. Can you more clearly distinguish uh, the, the volumetric versus monetary crediting and specifically how it affects project economics? So are you, you're, you're talking about remote net metered versus behind the meter system? I believe so, yeah. Okay, so with a remote net metered system, um, as I mentioned, you, you you can offset, you can pick and choose. The, the savings in a remote net metered system are there's greater potential savings because you can pick the higher price meters to include, to be to, as meters to be included to be offset with your solar project. With a behind the meter system, you are wedded to whatever kilowatt hours you are using at the site and whatever rate plan those kilowatt hours are on. And so, as I mentioned, with a behind the meter system, you have uh, it's a lower PPA rate. But typically in New York, you see relatively low, particularly for heavy use building, buildings that would be large enough to support a large enough solar system that you could do an economy of you could achieve an economy of scale on. Um, all in rates of around six and a half, seven and a half cents. And so, if you refer to the PPA rates I was quoting earlier. Um, six and a half cents is really on the low side. Um, uh, now that's not to say we, you know, we can. The goal is to be able to beat those rates, but it's really just a one-to-one -one offset with a behind the meter system. With a remote net meter system, um, it's more dependent on your load profile as a whole. So what are we can cherry pick those expensive meters and offset them with a lower PPA rate. Um, and the lower, the better, depending on how cost-effectively you can design that remote net meter system. Okay. Um, <clears throat> another question. Are there any disadvantages to extending a PPA past 20 years? No. Well, I mean, I wouldn't say that there's disadvantages. I would call them options. So uh, it really depends on... Say, for instance, you um, you like having the system there, but you don't like having to monitor it or maintain it. You want, like, having the solar vendor do that. Keep in mind that a PPA, from a financial perspective, is designed to uh, basically pay for itself within, within whatever the designated term is. So when that term is up, um, you can renegotiate your PPA rate. And so say um, you're at your tw the end of the 20-year term and you want to keep the system there, you want to keep it producing, but you don't want to monitor it, you don't want to maintain it, you want the vendor to do that, then that is the perfect opportunity to renegotiate those rates, um, ideally at a lower rate because you've got a 20-year-old system at that point, um, and then have the vendor continue to monitor and maintain it, ultimately be responsible for it, just keep producing kilowatt hours that you could utilize. So no. I wouldn't say that there are any disadvantages. Okay. <clears throat> uh, a very very practical question, Jen. Uh, how how would one set up a consultation with Solar City? Would that be just emailing you? Yeah, you can just email me. Okay. And uh, just to point out to everyone, I'm sure you see it on your screen. Uh, we've got everybody's uh, email addresses uh, up there, um, so everyone's welcome to hear from you, uh, including me. And uh, uh, so please, uh, please do so. Um, okay, this is very uh, kind of uh, rubber meets the road. Uh, for roof-mounted systems, is there a general rule of thumb for how much weight per square foot 
will be added to the roof for solar systems? Ah, that's a good question. Um, it is full disclosure. I have been focusing almost exclusively on New York. It's every project has been a ground mount. And so the previously, the, uh, the weight of our systems was around four pounds per square foot. But I believe we have a new product that we have launched for roof-mounted systems that gets it down to about two and a half pounds per square foot. So let's just say um, two and a half to four pounds, depending on the vendor and the type of racking that it's installed. Okay. Um, okay, how does one find out, uh, sorry, uh, how do you f find out uh, what, what areas uh, have additional incentives from being in a strategic location? So NYSERDA published that with the last round of incentives that they had available. I have that information, um, and it is available from NYSERDA as well. So any vendor that participated in the last round of incentives should have that. It was published by NYSERDA, and it was confirmed by NYSERDA for the next round. And so you can either contact your local solar vendor or contact NYSERDA themselves. Okay, very good. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, getting specific again, um, can anyone describe how much incentive would be for a two megawatt system? Uh, what the total incentive would be from NYSERDA? What the total dollar amount would be? I believe so, yeah. It depends on what the production of the system is. So if you go onto the New York Sun website, you'll see that there are different amounts. As I mentioned, there's different amounts for Con Ed territory, um, and there's different amounts for behind the meter versus remote net meter system. And all of those amounts are um, based on the production of the system. So it would really depend on what utility the system was in, um, what the total production of the system was, what block they got into, because keep in mind, this is a first come, first serve incentive. There are blocks of money and they are continually dropping, and whether it's behind the meter or remote net meters. So it, it's, not a, it's not a number I can give you that would just apply to any project across the state. It's specific to the project, uh, the design of the system, the location, and the utility. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so we're, uh, we're winding down towards the end of the hour, and I uh, just want to ask uh, panelists if you have any uh, closing summary thoughts uh, on this uh, ver very, very rich program, actually. I'll go really quickly. I would just say to anybody that's interested in um, getting involved, the first two blocks, um, each one has approximately 120 megawatts. Um, <clears throat> you know, obviously this is a first come, first served incentive. And the the first block, um, there's, we've already seen some activity in that. Some of that's gone already. The second block is full. Uh, there's not a huge difference between the incentives between the first two blocks, but obviously every cent um, makes a difference in what your, your PPA rate and ultimately your savings. So if you are at all interested in a project, I would encourage you to get going as quickly as possible. And if you go onto the New York Sun's website, they have um, basically an online tracker that will give you the status of those blocks at any given time. Very good. Uh, Al or Steve, any uh Parting shots for me. This is this is this is Steve call, uh, with a just I guess a closing comment here that um, you know it's refreshing to see uh, the state um, empower the local governments, incentivize us to invest in solar energy, and I uh, really like to credit the governor uh, for putting forward a program that has generated so much interest, uh, let's just say renewed interest, in solar energy uh, and the benefits that it might have to local governments. I'd encourage listeners to uh, 
to have uh, Solar City or their solar provider come in and talk to them and walk them through uh, how this program works and, uh, and, and keep it simple because if you get into the weeds with things, um, it's really, it can become a complex uh, program that the engineers would be looking at. But I think if, if you just keep it uh, at a level that's easy to explain to the elected body, to the elected officials so that they can appreciate the savings and what's actually happening with this power purchase agreement, uh, that it, it should move much, much quicker than it, than it otherwise would. And in that regard, for the listeners, if they want help walking through this process, they can contact us with the email that you see on the screen here, and we'll walk you through the process. Uh, we now have extensive experience walking 30 counties through this process right now and counseling others who chose to go on their own with a different vendor or a different type of renewable product, uh, we can help walk through that process. But we, we feel that uh, Solar City has more than delivered uh, what they have promised to these local governments all across New York State. And uh, again, I'd like to thank you, Clint, for hosting this and including us in this webinar. Sure. Uh, well, uh, I want to thank uh, all, all of you, Steve, Al, and Jen, really, really great content, great detail and insight. Um, and our, our sponsors, NISAC and Solar City, for this webinar. We, uh, as I say, it, it is, has been recorded and will be available, um, uh, archived. Um, so uh, thanks to everyone for joining us, and um, have a great day. Bye-bye.